Hi, this is Kerry Christian. We're here at CE Week. We just had a fascinating conference session on IBM Watson and uh, what's happening with uh, intelligence and deep thought and uh, all sorts of things like that. And we're here with uh, Jerome Pazenti, who's at the uh, IBM Watson Lab, and he's the head of this project. And let's let's just start with the obvious, uh, Jerome. What what is Watson? Give us a quick definition. So Watson is basically a set of capabilities done by computers that you will usually associate with humans. Watson can understand images, can understand speech, can dialogue, converse with you, uh, can discover insight out of data that usually computers don't understand. So as we were talking about during the session, as you guys were going over, one of the things that a lot of companies want to do is they want to be the part that people touch. And you guys are a little bit different. You want to be the back end. That's right, we want to be the engine behind all these you know, AI-powered applications. And what's different from you and the cloud is that in the cloud there's a lot of storage and with you, there's a lot of storage plus a lot of intelligence. That's right, I mean actually we, I mean Watson lives in the cloud today, right? So we are a set of cognitive capabilities, you know, AI capabilities in the cloud. And I understand that the biggest thing that Watson's doing, or at least the most advanced application right now, has to do with healthcare. Tell us a little bit about that. So we're trying to create systems that allow doctors to understand patient records better and match these patient records to treatments, for example. So we have a system that can understand literature, understand clinical trials, and then match that back to the very you know, verbose patient records. And so is this going back and forth in one area, like oncology, or do you have a couple different areas where you're doing this? So oncology is one example where we assist people, basically, you know, suggest uh, treatment for cancer. But we have other areas, a lot of the chronic disease, you know, are now leveraging a system like Watson. And we have also a lot of effort around imagery, you know, understand x-rays, uh, and understand, as I mentioned, patient records. So are you primarily helping doctors or are nurses being helped or other healthcare professionals? I mean, who's, who's the actual user of this? Actually, it depends. There are many actually use cases. In what some cases, actually assisting the doctors in making a recommendation. In others, it's actually uh, help, uh, helping healthcare institution, you know, figuring out where to store their patient records, getting insight out of them, doing research on them, et cetera, et cetera. So we touched many, many players in that space. And another uh, interesting application has to do with education and kids and things like that. Tell us about how kids react with Watson. I mean, we're trying to create systems that provide more natural interaction and allow you to have a more personalized experience with, uh, with the user, in this case, kids, right? So kids first love you know, speech systems. You know, they, they want to interact with a the computer. They don't have to type. Many of them are too, uh, too young to type. So we're trying to help them create these natural interfaces based on language, based on voice, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the back end also understand, you know, the education framework and help, you know, educators basically make a personalized uh, uh, system. And the session today was uh, moderated by Ed Begg, who's with USA Today, the personal tech columnist. And uh, Ed asked uh, some of the same questions I just asked, but he also got off on a, a bit of interest about what's going on in the future. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about what you learned about the future. Well, I. Uh, I'm fascinated by this idea, and we've all seen science fiction movies. I'm fascinated by this idea that the, not that the computers are going to take over, but everybody asks these questions. At what point does, it, does the machine become so intelligent, you know, it's artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, deep machine intelligence. At what point do we have to concern ourselves about what these machines are really up to? You know, uh, again, I'm not personally worried that it's going to happen next week or 10 years from now or probably in, in, you know, say our kids' lifetimes, but, you know, pie in the sky stuff, at what point does the machine become a threat, if you will? I don't want to overstate it, but we, again, we've all seen these movies. Well, Bill Gates famously said that uh, we tend to uh, overestimate how much change will happen in a short period of time and underestimate how much change will happen over a long period of time. There's something like that going on here. Yeah, I, I think there is. I mean, you know, if you look backwards, you know, you know, when we were growing up, we couldn't imagine some of the stuff. Obviously, you know, you have this uh, amazing, you know, computer in your pocket now. It's, it's, you know, then it gets down to nothing where you can't even see it. It's embedded in your clothing. You know, all sorts of things, obviously. So, yeah, I, I, th I think that, I think we don't know what we don't know, but we do know that it's going to be something pretty amazing, 
you know, if we were having this conversation 100 years from now, this, this stuff will all sound primitive, right? Well, we're not having it 100 years from now. We're having it at CE Week in New York. And thank both of you for uh, being here. A great session, guys. Thank you.